So as you said, my name is PJ Haggerty. I'm from the US, from a very small place called Buffalo, New York. If you've never been there, I'm not surprised. Uh, you can find me on Twitter as a splenic. It's a medical condition that became a handle for things. I, that, that, that'll be great party conversation later. I work at Engineard. And Engineard is a platform as a service. We do Ruby, PHP, Node.js. It's high performance, 24-7 uptime. We have the most amazing support team ever. And we also have to be putting on a conference that is language agnostic in August in San Francisco. Again, if you want more information about that, come see me. That's the slide I had to say. So local Ruby groups. Um, when we think of a local Ruby group, we basically think of a, a bunch of people getting together once a month, maybe twice a month tops, that are focused on Ruby, and they're very small. They're generally socially based, but you know maybe they do little tiny code projects here and there and contribute here and there. But for the most part, they're tiny, they're insular, and they're people who are only getting out of their basements once a month. And that's fun, because it's, it's really easy to do that. And you know, just see these same you know, four, five, six people every single month. But what if we started to think kind of outside of that box? We have stagnation with this. If you're just seeing the same people talk about the same three subjects, and the same set of speakers rotates every three months, it starts to get kind of boring. We saw this with our, our, our group, the Western New York Ruby Brigade. Um, they started six years ago. Um, but it never really got rolling until a couple years ago when we said, let's start doing things more socially. Let's start reaching out a bit more. And this talk is a lot about what we did to do that. And we did model a lot of what we did on Boston RB because they grew exponentially and quickly. So what if we started to get out of that insular shell? What if we stopped just looking right here, right in this tiny box in front of us, and started kind of reaching out? Well, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do that. The first way is to start within the group. You have to make your local Ruby group better. You start doing that by taking that group of six people and diversifying responsibilities. Somebody's got to be in charge of setting up meetup.com. Somebody's got to be in charge of the Twitter account. Someone should blog what happened at the last meeting so we could talk about it. Everyone has to have something to do. Everyone has to be a port point person. There's always a few people who are totally willing to go to every meetup, but they sit in the background and they have a good time and they talk, but they don't ever get up here or they don't, don't get up in front of the group and ever give any kind of session. Those are the people you want to focus on doing some of these side jobs and helping out in the behind the scenes work. Um, another key is you have to get involved in social media. I don't think there's too many people in this room who aren't familiar with any of these things. Maybe meetup.com, I don't know if that's like mostly a US thing, but meetup.com is a great way to say, you know, if you go there you can say, I am interested in skiing. Show me every meetup group that's interested in skiing within a 50 kilometer radius of where I am right now. And it will find that for you. And we've actually, our membership has grown simply from people who went in and typed Ruby. And people from outside of our area, like all the way up into Canada, found that information and they were like, oh cool, there's a Ruby group, I'll totally go. But it's something that you have to, you know, actually reach out and do progressively. Like you can't just send a tweet once a month, hey, we're meeting next Tuesday, I hope that's cool, talk to you later, bye. Um, you have to be informative, you have to get the word out there. The new people, the people, the unknown members of your Ruby group who don't even know they're members yet have to find out about you and you have to use every single one of these things to do that. Um, there's a few don'ts when you're trying to improve your Ruby group though. Don't be exclusive. Um, consider anyone who's interested in Ruby, even anyone who's interested in technology or programming, a potential member of your Ruby group. Um, one way to do that is by making sure that your Ruby group does not consist of all experts who are like X level people who are, you know, walking in and talking about exactly why they're going to build Bundler tomorrow. You can't have Yehuda Cats be the every member of your Ruby group. That'd be awesome and conversations would be great, but no one new is ever going to show up. And don't, don't be a jerk. Um, this is an issue that came up, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but we start, started doing joint meetups. And oddly, it wasn't someone from our group who decided to kind of haul off and be a little bit of an ass. It was someone from the other technologies user group that decided he was going to go on a tirade in his speech about why Ruby is wrong. And he ended up being wrong in the end. So being a jerk is going to backfire on you anyway. But there are some really cool things that you can do to keep your lo local Ruby group on like a super groovy level, um, which was, I used the word groovy just so I could put that slide up. Um, make sure you incorporate students. 
young people from whether they're high school age, middle school age, um, college age, they're interested and their ideas are probably more malleable than we are because we've been doing this for so long. They have new perspectives and they have different ways of looking at things. Um, the other thing is to get people who are experienced from other disciplines. We've had several people come in who were engineers, um, managers, to kind of talk about different ways to attack problems. They didn't understand Ruby code and we didn't understand engineering, you know, from a physical engineering point of view. But some of the lessons learned are lessons that we can apply to what we do every day. Um, you have to get new, fresh perspectives all the time. If you don't, you go back to that problem of it becoming stagnant, people stop showing up, you're back to, you know, six smelly guys in a room going, eh, hey, we could talk about Ruby or we could go watch Iron Man 3. Either way, you know, we're still spending the time. Um, you'll notice the next part of the, the title of the talk was Act Globally. Um, we're open source software engineers. That's pretty cool. Open source is, in many cases for us, allowing us to make enough money that we can live and have great jobs and work at fun places and do fun things with programming. But what that means is we, we've taken something. And acting globally through your Ruby group is about giving back. Um, you start with the idea of cross-group cross projects. You know, you have, let's say, for example, you have a Ruby group, there's a Python group. Um, you have an idea for, for something, you know, some, some gem, and they're not familiar with that, but you know all the details. So get them involved. Invite them over. Have a few beers, talk about it, see what you can do. Um, try to do regional social meetups. Um, geographically, you're probably not separated from the next Ruby group by that much unless you're in a really, really remote location, which is possible. But if you can actually start bringing people in and they're willing to take the drive, um, we have people come in from Rochester, which is a town about an hour away from Buffalo, and they're willing to come, like, they come like every three months, and we go out there like every three months, so we see each other enough and they get interested in what we're doing, we exchange speakers and information and it's pretty cool. Um, and that kind of brings us to the next point of bringing in guest speakers. Um, we actually started um, doing that about a year ago when we had a joint meetup with the PHP group, and we decided that if we're doing a joint meetup with the PHP group, let's get a heavy hitter. So we brought in Steve Kalabnik, who gave a talk about testing, which blew the minds of every PHP developer at that meetup. They're like, holy shit, testing? Tell me more. We don't do this. We should do this. Um, but it definitely brought something interesting to the table, and he's someone that, yeah, he only came the one time, but at the same time, he gave us an opportunity to see somebody outside of our little circle that then, you know, we took in that information and started developing things to give back to his project, so we're giving back on a global level. Um, the other thing, and this is, this is one of the keys for Boston RB, is web broadcasts. Um, Boston RB is, a, is, is probably, I'll go ahead and say, probably the most successful Ruby meetup in the world. They sell out, you know, tickets are free, but you have to get a ticket, and if you don't get a ticket, you're not going. But they've made it possible through things like Google Hangout and Skype and what have you, to actually see their speakers every month, even if you can't physically make it or you didn't get a ticket and you're not gonna fit in the room. That gives so many more people in the global community the opportunity to see you know, big people who can come up on stage because this is Boston, it's a big city, people wanna go and speak there. So it's a great way to you know, give a little bit back through your local Ruby group to the general community at large. Um, so the community, we've only heard this word about 700 times today, I'm gonna say it again at least 600 more times in this talk. Um, so this first one, I know a lot of people are looking at it and saying, the local PHP group, heresy, unacceptable. We cannot let those people in to see our many trade secrets. What if they run away and start making frameworks with MVC? Oh, too late. But the idea here is that a joint meetup with another technology group is another fresh perspective. You're all living in the same area. You probably have the same ideas. Some of you might be working on very similar projects for very similar clients. It's not about the tool belt that you wore to, to work that day. It's about the problem that you have and how it got solved. The tools are less important. We're all problem solvers as developers. And the best way to look at that is that the language doesn't matter. Because it really doesn't. You know, I think Michael brought that up when he talked about Twilio and C-sharp and PHP and Java and 
Ruby, and all of these things that go into all of the things that they do. Because you have to look at things from the problem-solving perspective, not the language perspective. Um, again, we drive to nearby groups. I've been to Toronto RB, Cleveland RB. Um, they're all RBs. I took a train to Rhode Island. That was a nightmare. You should never take trains in America. That's the takeaway there. Um, we send our group members to regional meetups or regional conferences. Uh, last year um, in Pittsburgh, they had a conference called Steel City. It was limited to 200 people. It was a whole 50 American dollars. And most of the people drove there, and it was absolutely brilliant. It was a mere three hours away from where we live. And yet, that little distance, that little trip, made a huge difference in the way that we were looking at things. We got an opportunity to see, meet, see and meet people who were doing things in a brand new way that we weren't thinking about because we were in a different domain. And it was just a great opportunity. Um, another way to kind of improve the community is through a thing called OpenHack. OpenHack is a language agnostic meetup. So you come in with your Ruby tools and your machines all set up, and maybe somebody has an idea for an application, and everybody kind of tosses their ideas on the table. Awesome, cool. Set up a Git repo. Everybody starts working out in their own way. And what starts to happen is, you know, you start looking over the next guy's shoulder and say, oh, this is how you're doing this? Can I implement this in my language? And now you're having more people interested in what you're doing. You're developing together. You're giving back to a huge GitHub repo. This was an idea that one of our, uh, one of our Western New York Ruby members had, and in the space of months, there were open hacks all over the world. Because it was that, it was that simple of an idea, that executable of an idea, that it was possible. Um, the other thing is to make your own conference, and this is yet another conference plug. That's two conference plugs, one talk. Thank you. I'm PJ. Um, we decided, based on what they did in Pittsburgh, that we were going to hold our own conference in Buffalo, which would give us an opportunity to showcase the fact that we are actually a very technologically oriented city and give the opportunity to bring the big names to the people who don't get the opportunity to travel as much for whatever reason, family or whatever. Now they can just go downtown and come to our conference and see all these big names that they've heard about and followed on Twitter for years. And that changes their perspective, and that's our Ruby group setting it up and giving us more of an opportunity to be global citizens. Um, other ways to act globally. Uh, free training, offer to do coder dojos, um, have kids come in and learn from you as an experienced engineer. Um, they can ask whatever questions they want, and you teach them whatever way you want, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, we do community outreach, which is, you know, a lot of going to other Ruby groups, talking to them about how to set up their Ruby group like ours and be cool about it. Um, we get kids involved. A, a few of you have heard this story, but I actually got my daughter to do kids Ruby, and she is now speaking at more conferences than I am. She's 11. Um, but then again, you know, and the key is, you know, all of these things kind of link together. If you offer free, tra tr free training, you incorporate the students. The, the students are cool with doing these community outreach things like going out to the Girl Scouts and teaching all these kids to code Ruby in little simple ways and make a little turtle that they can see on the screen. And it's amazing. And now you have all this stuff that you're giving back. You know, you haven't just taken, you know, all this open source stuff and said, ah, fuck it, I'm running away with it. Um, you've taken it and you've made it something where you're able to contribute back, not in a code way, but in a social way, which is something we forget. Um, so what's the key? So I have a friend, his name is David Collier. He likes to say things and he likes to point out that we quote things too much in our presentations. But he said something very important that applies here. Momentum is everything. If you get it, make damn sure you keep it for as long as you can and enjoy the compounding velocity. With a Ruby group, you have to keep it fresh. You have to keep it interesting and you have to keep it going. Um, just a show of hands, how many of you attend your local Ruby group every month? How many of you organize it? These people deserve applause. I mean, I, I, gave, some, I gave some outlines, but to keep, to keep it moving forward, to keep it fresh, to keep it interesting is very difficult, and that really falls on the shoulders of one or two people every month. So if you diversify, if you bring the people in, if you get those people involved, and then you start reacting to the things that you're doing, giving back to the community, you can easily have a successful Ruby group that works on both the local and global level. With that, I'm PJ. Um, you can find me here. Oh, that's a different email than I had on the first slide. That's awesome. Um, lessons learned, don't play with fire, no matter how drunk you are at camping. Thank you very much.
Questions? Any questions? Any questions at all? Hey, this is not so much a question as a comment. Um, I think your perspective is very important. Uh, as, as, a, as Ruby developers, we kind of feel elistic in, in, in some way because we work on a technology that hasn't been around for so many years. And I think it's important not to stay in this ivory tower and not to protect our knowledge and share it with others, especially less gifted developers like PHP developers, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. I was just proving my points by, no, being, no. by being obnoxious. <laughs> no, but you, you bring up a good point. I, I think that um, I've talked about this a little bit with a few people, too, and there's kind of this attitude that, that you know, for a long time, Ruby was a baby language. Like, it's cute, and I'll play with it, but that's all it's going to do. I'll never make an enterprise application with this. And as it's grown in Rails and this and that and Sinatra and Twitter was doing it and everybody was doing it, it it's gained more publicity, but we still have issues kind of wedging into... That, uh, that enterprise space. Um, I think a lot of people outside of the Ruby community don't realize how much Ruby there is out there. And I think that by doing like, things like joint meetups and bringing the, the less experienced developers, as you said, <laughs> to, the, uh, to, to your forum, they get a chance to see that there is more going on with Ruby than just you know guy in basement coding thing that might never be seen in the light of day. But yeah, it definitely, the, the more you can incorporate people who aren't doing Ruby into Ruby, the more they're going to like Ruby, the more Ruby we're going to see around. And do you think it, best, it could make sense to have less specialized local meetup? Like uh, you say we should organize joint meetup, but do you, do you think it makes sense to have uh, more wider meetups, technology-oriented, but not specific on Ruby or PHP? Or... A ab absolutely. And that's kind of what OpenHack is all about. It's less about having people come in to speak and more about having um, a problem-solving session where everyone brings their own set of tools, regardless of what that is. Um, the guy who started OpenHack in Buffalo, he, he's a Rubyist. Uh, Nick Coranto, he, he might do like Ruby gems dot something something, I don't know. But um, he's a Rubyist and he wanted to see how other people were solving problems similar to the problems that he was solving. And so he started it and I think the, the first few nights it was, you know, there was Rubyist, there were a couple PHP guys, there was a .NET person and they're all hacking away at this little project and it, it just got to be fun and you, and you realize, you know, these lines, these, these flag waving sessions that we have saying Ruby, yay, they're not really as big as we think they are. I think there's more of a perception of disparity between languages than there's actually disparity. So yeah, definitely. I mean, OpenHack is exactly the solution to that problem. Like, it's not technology specific. It's technology oriented. Anybody else? All right, thank you very much.